Welcome to Los Santos, the city of celluloid, sin, and cellulite removal. From dead starlets and vine wood, to the gang bangers and Davis of strawberry, and terracels and chumash, to the drunken tourists and Del Perro Pier. It's time to take a look inside this cesspit of destroyed dreams, drug addled degenerates, and deluded desperados that make up this great city of lights. Hi. I'm decorated FIB agent Stephen Haynes. The FIB, the police department, the sheriff's office are fighting a war out here every day in a city where dreams too often become wet with tears. The Los Santos docks. This is where it all begins. The second largest port in the world. The great orifice of American capitalism. Stuff coming in, garbage going out and hidden in over two million containers a day, God only knows what. The cartels pay off some low-level schlub and suddenly you've got military-grade weapons, badly cut crystal meth, and grade-A yayo from Mexico flooding our streets. And once it hits the hood, it's anarchy. With a side of murder, hold the fries. Or maybe the Chinese are slipping some of our high-security weapon systems in with the recycling. And we're giving up our national security for nothing? Who knows? Who cares? As long as the financial party continues, we'll just keep picking up the pieces. A word to the wise, kids. Never use PCP. It makes you want to punch cops or run around naked, and not necessarily always in that order. Most of the time, this illicit cargo makes it straight to the gangs. But sometimes an ordinary Joe lets go and loses his shit after a pipe or two of pleasure dust. The Vagos, bloodthirsty Jacanos with a predilection for pain, papaya juice, and spicy plantains. They're one of the largest Mexican street gangs in the city, with rumored connections to several major mafias. While half the battle out here is fought with guns, the other half is with informants. Sometimes you need to become the bad guys to bust the bad guys. All right, guys, let's go. When the ballas and the families aren't shooting each other, they're selling the dope that the junkies are shooting into their veins. The families love sports almost as much as they love banging. Flashy, arrogant, competitive, and aggressive, they are lifelong bitter enemies of the ballas. Wearing the colors of the feud or the corkers, the families call themselves gang green. Of course, like all families, they love a good squabble. Subdivided into sets, such as the Chamberlain Gangsters or the Carson Avenue set, it turns out the families love shooting each other almost as much as they love shooting ballas. Now the LSPD have had many run-ins with various family sets over the years. With the ballas, the FIB take a more community outreach approach. Hey, hey guys, stay out of trouble now. They suck my dick, Steve f***ing Haynes. Now the ballas fly the colors of the Los Santos Panic, or the Boars, purple, because they are the bruise on the face of this city. While some thugs obviously prefer four wheels, other desperados prefer two. Leather, exhaust, and drugs. No, this isn't an exotic S&M party. These are one of the nation's toughest outlaw motorcycle gangs, the Lost. Rumors are they get a new tattoo for every person they stab. And it's definitely okay for your motorcycle mama to show her breast to your friends. The FIB has been tracking the lost for years. We've jumped from coast to coast and have spent more time in the Midwest than a tornado spotter. When they're not running meth, they're smoking it. Or so I hear a dangerous new drug on the streets called toilet cleaner. And believe me, your toilet will be cleaned after you've smoked some of it. Mm. Of course, Vinewood being Vinewood, it's not all about leathery dudes trying to show off on their motorbikes or roided up gangbangers stuck in some 90s time warp. This is the town that made mass murder into nostalgia.
Of course, to become truly popular, your murder has to be both unsolved and gruesome. In a town full of alien spotters, adults dressed as zombies, and entertainers dressed as cartoon characters, it takes something particularly awful to really catch people's attention. The famous unsolved murder of a Vinewood starlet is one such case. For years, horny nerds have wondered what happened to Leonora Johnson, and if they would have plucked up the courage to speak to her or kill her themselves. It's inspired filmmakers, writers, and copycat killers. Conspiracy theorists have blamed various celebrities, the mayor, the Soviets, short skirts, women's liberation, and hidden aliens embedded amongst us for the murder. But not all crime is premeditated. Maybe drinking's your thing. Look at this drunken buffoon proving that there doesn't always need to be criminal intent to cause serious criminal damage. Or maybe you're just an overprivileged poppycock living on daddy's pension and protesting about the unfairness of capitalism. Maybe stock market manipulation is your bag, or loan sharking, double identity theft, assassination, or even worse, swinging. On our next episode, I, Stephen Haynes, will show you the flashier side of crime in Los Santos, illegal street racing, cocaine, and vice. Yes, speed, snort, and sex the alliterative threesome that helped hook America on the underbelly of paradise.